Thanks, Robin. Um, so I'm st I, I wanted to answer the second part of this question today because Mike has obviously done a, a great job of answering the first part of it, but also animal welfare is my area of expertise. Um, so I'm going to be speaking specifically around the role animal welfare plays in these poultry production challenges around vaccination. Um, obviously, as we get started, uh, I'm going to be focusing on vaccine for the, the focus of the talk, but it's really important to state up front that poultry welfare is more than just vaccination um, and animal welfare and poultry welfare is more than just animal health. It also includes how we manage animals, how we care for them, the opportunities that they have around behaviour, social interactions, choice and, and housing and things like that. So when we think about animal welfare from that perspective, it's really, well, animal welfare is very broad and this is just one specific point that I'm going to be addressing. Um, another thing that's really important as a caveat before I start is that every production system globally, no matter the scale or the country that it's in, is going to have uh, welfare benefits and welfare issues as well. So when I'm describing, you know, animal welfare today um, and in these contexts, there's each situation will have its, each situation is going to be different and there will be no good situation and no bad situation that I'll be describing. Um, next, please. Thank you. So, yeah, so obviously poultry welfare is going to be increased with the prevention of disease. That's really, you know, I'm sure we could all agree with that. But when I think about how animal welfare connects to these vaccination challenges, like what Mike mentioned, and through to actually how well it's being provided to animals and how effective it's being to, to the birds it's being provided to, I think it can be broken down into three different issues. The first one is the impact that not having adequate vaccine has on animal welfare. This is highlighted in that second dot point here. Um, some published work by Butterworth and Weeks, it describes really well the challenges that birds have from a welfare perspective when they're suffering from disease. And that ranges everything from the pain and their behavioural changes through to their productivity and livability. So all different components of um, the... I'm sorry, I've just lost my screen share. Um, all the different components of, um, of, of animal welfare that way and how the individual bird is responding. Um, the second is that there's actually benefits from having, from thinking about animal welfare as a way to control um, animal health and animal disease. So for example, the conditions we keep animals in um, and their behavioral opportunities, it can affect how well animals can cope um, with disease in the first place and how susceptible they are. So animal welfare can be used as a positive tool um, in the toolkit along with vaccination to improve poultry health. And then the third welfare challenge, welfare connection to vaccines is what happens in, in, in positions where there's been disease outbreak. Um, we know that humane culling uh, can be really compromised when there's, been, when there's a large number of birds being culled at scale. Next, please. And then also what, just touching on what it means for human welfare. Um, so we know the FAO stats from 2019 said that there was almost 26 billion chickens globally. So we know that they play a huge role in animal source food available to all of us globally. Um, from this perspective, they, you know, having healthy birds in, in that supply chain or in that food chain has a really strong connection to human welfare. Next, thanks. Great. Uh, but then there's also an individual level connection that needs to be addressed. So in low and middle income countries, particularly in low income countries where vaccines might not, you know, are not very well distributed or um, they don't have the same access to, uh, to um, animal health care as we would experience in high income countries, this impact on human welfare from disease and lack of vaccination and animal welfare compromise is really substantial. Um, for example, in this picture, this woman would rely on her household poultry for the um, essential nutrition that she, the essential nutrition that her and her baby on her back, as you can see as well, need. As well, and this would also contribute to their livelihoods. Um, the last talk in the poultry series, in the One Health poultry series, covered the role of gender in poultry production, and that would be a really nice starting point for anyone that wanted to learn some more about this. Next, thanks. So when it comes to vaccines and welfare barriers, um, where the challenges are, aside from all of the challenges around implementation and creation of vaccines that Mike mentioned, 
There's other components that are specific, I think, to um, some of them that are specific to poultry and some of them to, that are specific to different resources that influence um, how, how well animals can cope or poultry can cope in this situation. So for example, poultry are small animals with short lifespans. So when they're thought about in terms of their animal welfare, they're often thought about as a group, even in, in small settings. Um, this means that the welfare of individual animals is overlooked often. And that obviously from the welfare of that individual bird is really significant. So there's that, that component to it too. When we're thinking about something that has, you know, a five or ten percent mortality, but you think about that in the context of how many birds are within a household, or how many birds are, are globally, then that's a huge number of individual animals that are experiencing a welfare challenge. Um, in some uh, positions, particularly in low-income countries, health support services, um, animal health su services are poorly supported. Human health services are poorly supported in lots of cases as well, um, and so the opportunity to actually vaccinate and have that. Um, have those wins there for animal health and productivity uh, don't, don't exist so, so much. Um, and then the third point I think is really important too, that often it's kind of presumed that farmers don't um, know enough about animal health or don't seem to care so much about um, providing the adequate health care for their animals. And this really misses the complexities and deficiencies around the system like I described before. Um, one of the key things that we see coming up time and time again with different species is that when farmers have um, invested previously in the health and welfare of their animals and it hasn't resulted for whatever reason in the outcome that they had expected, they're obviously less likely to invest in that going forwards. Um, and that has impact and, and you know, that impacts obviously their how much they're willing to, to invest in terms of their time and their emotion and their finances. And obviously it doesn't, it reflects the, the previous investment that they've had as well. So I think that that's, you, that is, that's an important component of this, that sort of social, um, that social or per psychological impact. Next, please. And then looking at welfare opportunities and, um, for product and production opportunities going forwards. Um, like I mentioned right at the start, vaccines are an important component of a broader control strategy. Um, and this goes hand in hand with animal welfare. So <clears throat> for example, biosecurity, hygiene and management are all critical in that, but also how those animals are cared for in terms of their husbandry, the housing opportunities that they have, you know, from um, the, the densities that they're kept in, the shelters that they have available to them, um, all of these different components and are gonna be influential to that animal's welfare, and then also influential into how robust it is against, against disease um, and, and other health issues. There's also in terms of uh, in low-income country settings in particular, um, and in, in, in um, intensive production poultry, the role of different breeds as well. So for example, in situations where vaccines aren't um, freely available or as effective as they should be, uh, local breeds are gonna be more resilient to diseases in that context. Um, and at the same time as well, there's going to be different breeds that are going to be better adapted to um, more uh, commercial poultry production where that's available to them too. Um, and then finally, uh, good stock management as an early, early identification um, and intervention for disease is critical. And that obviously affects other welfare challenges too. What we can see is that equally resourced farms that might have the same breed, um, environmental conditions, feed availability, and healthcare availability will still have differences in welfare. And that comes down to how well the person or the people are managing those animals and caring for those animals. So being able to have you know, good stockmanship or stockpersonship is really critical for that as well. Next, thanks. Thank you. And then, yeah, just finally, I thought that this was a really nice quote from Butterworth and Weeks as well, where they described, you know, the role of, of, um, of animal welfare at, this, at the flock level and down to the individual level. So while flock health is frequently chosen as an index of welfare, it fails, you shouldn't be losing sight of that individual animal, because not only does that individual animal have a capacity for suffering, but for some people, individual animals like this woman in this um, Indonesian wet market, that and those individual animals are critical to her livelihood as well and the household food security in and her household food security too so thank you very much <laughs>